Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important features of Realme GT Master. By the way, I have already posted a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. With that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone is definitely its performance. This phone sports a Snapdragon 778G 5G processor with Adreno 642 LGPU. Purely in terms of performance, it's not that impressive, but considering the price, it's pretty good. Next, it also has a pretty impressive display. It comes with a 6.43 inch Super AMOLED display with 120Hz screen refresh rate with HDR10 Plus support. Now this is definitely one of the best displays in the market and as it's an AMOLED display, it's great for watching videos, playing games and it's also very power efficient. Next, we also got some pretty good cameras. On the back, it comes with a triple camera setup with a 64 megapixel primary camera. For selfies, we get a 32 megapixel camera with f2.5 aperture. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its super fast charging speeds. This phone comes with a 4300 mAh battery along with a 65 watt power adapter. You can completely charge your phone from 0 to 100% in just 33 minutes. And if you want to charge just 80%, then you can do it under 15 minutes, which is super fast charging speeds. Next, we have dark mode. This is another famous feature. And once you enable this feature, it'll change all the UI elements to the dark mode or the dark theme. Things like notification panel, home screen, or even settings all change to the dark mode. Some of the system applications like the phone dialer, SMS application also change to the dark mode. Some Google applications like Play Store and YouTube also automatically change to the dark mode. Next, we have Super Power Saver Mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone turns on dark mode, restricts performance, reduces battery usage, and gives you few applications that you can use, and also gives you the option to add few more apps. In this mode, phone's standby time increases drastically. By the way, we can still use internet in this mode. It does consume more battery, but it is definitely better than the regular mode. Next, we have Eye Comfort Mode. It's just another name for the reading mode, and once you enable it, it puts a warm tint on the screen to reduce the blue light emitted from the display. It also has the black and white mode where it turns the whole display black and white. We have a new navigation gesture called swipe from both sides. Now once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom to go home, swipe and hold for recent taps, and finally swipe from the left side or right side to go back a step. These are the new swipe gestures even seen on Android 10 and it's already available on this phone. Now going on next, we have a super handy shortcut to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Once you enable this feature, you can long press the power button to trigger Google Assistant. It's a nice feature and can be quite useful while using the navigation gestures. But I don't think this power button will last longer if you use it continuously. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. Well, there are mainly two ways. One is by using the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. Once enabled, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. By default, this gesture is always enabled. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a long screenshot. First, take a screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Once you have the preview of the screenshot, just swipe it down to take a long screenshot. If you have already opened the screenshot, you can click this button to take a longer screenshot. Next, we have partial screenshot. For this feature, we are going to use that three finger screenshot gesture in a different way. Once you enable this feature, you can just touch and hold the screen to take a partial screenshot. You just need to place the three fingers, then slide it slowly to take a partial screenshot. Now going on next, this phone even comes with screen recording. I really don't know why you want to record your screen, especially on an Android phone. But for some reason, if you want to record it, you can start it from the notification toggles or you can also use the smart bar which can be accessed from anywhere by swiping on the right side corner. You can stop recording by clicking the stop button on the floating bubble. Next we have flash on call. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, flashlight on the phone blinks to give you an indication. This feature can be quite useful when your phone is in silent mode. Next we have a feature called vibrate when you answer an end call. Just like the name suggests, every time you answer a call or end a call, your phone vibrates. It's not a big feature, but adds to the overall experience. Next, we have a feature that identifies unknown numbers. 
Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call from any unknown number, your phone will check its online database and try to find the contact name. This can be quite useful to check spam calls. Next, we have a feature called Screen On End Calls with Power Button. Once you enable this feature, you can end calls by pressing the power button when the display is on. When the display is off, clicking the power button just turns on the display. Next, we have Split Screen Mode. Now, Split Screen Mode has been on Android for a very long time, but on this phone, we have some more features. Now, to start a Split Screen Mode, as always, you can simply press and hold the Recent Apps button. Or on this phone, you can also use the three finger gesture. Simply swipe up using three fingers to open the current application in a split screen mode. You can choose a secondary application from the list below. Personally, I like this gesture and I wish every other phone has it. Next, we have some screen off gestures like double tap to wake. Just enable it and double tap the screen to wake it up. Next, you can draw a note to open the camera application. We can also draw a V to toggle the torch. We can also draw characters like greater than or less than for music controls. And finally, you can add custom gestures like you can draw a W to open WhatsApp, M for phone dialer and so on. Next we have raise to wake. Now once you enable this feature, you can simply raise your phone or pick it up from a table and your phone wakes up and then displays the lock screen. Next we have flip to mute incoming calls. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can flip your phone to silence an incoming call. Next we have one-handed mode. You can enable this feature from the toggles and once you click on it, screen size will shrink and your phone becomes much more usable one-handed. Once you're done, you can click the button on the top corner to go full screen. Next we have digital well-being. Now this is a feature from Google that tracks all your usage on your phone and gives you a complete analysis of which apps you're using more and then helps you limit your usage and block notifications from those applications. Next we have Wind Down. This feature is part of digital well-being which can help you sleep faster at night. Using this feature, you can schedule your phone to turn on grayscale mode and do not disturb mode automatically at a specific time. Next we have OC Visual Effect. This feature slightly improves the picture quality of the display by making content from apps like TikTok, WeMeet and more look more pleasing. It does work, but right now only few applications support it and it does drain your battery. Now going on next, this phone has a very unique feature called Smart Sidebar. It is enabled by default and this is how it looks like. You have some quick shortcuts, quick actions and some quick applications. You can access it from anywhere. Even while watching videos or playing games in full screen mode, you can swipe near the notch area to bring it up. From here, you can quickly launch applications, take a screenshot, record the screen, block banner notifications, and finally open few applications in a floating window. Next, we have Assistive Ball. Now, just in case if navigation gestures are not really your thing, but you still want a much more immersive experience, you can enable Assistive Ball. Once you enable this feature, you'll see a floating bubble that can do multiple actions. Now first you need to select the operation mode. You have gestures and tap mode. I'll go with gestures. Now you can tap once to go back, double tap for multitasking and touch and hold to go home. If you select tap, once you click it, you just get additional options just like the iPhones and iPads. Now this is another way to interact with your phone and gives you a much more immersive experience. Next we have startup manager. Now just like the name suggests, it's a feature that allows you to stop applications from auto starting in the background. Now most of these applications automatically start in the background and then drain your battery life. And for the most part, just applications like maybe Instagram or WhatsApp needs to be allowed to auto start. So you can disable auto start permission for all these applications and further improve the battery life. Next, we have an app lock built into the system. And unlike most phones, we can unlock locked applications either by using the password or the fingerprint scanner and even by using the face unlock feature. So if you're already using face unlock feature on your phone, most of the time, you won't even see the lock screen. Now, because of this one particular feature, you can lock any application you want and you won't be inconvenienced in any way. Next, we have Clone Apps, which is a feature that allows you to use two instances of the same application. Like you can have two WhatsApp accounts, two Facebook accounts and two Instagram accounts on the same phone. This is definitely a very handy feature, but it is still limited to only very few applications. Let's say if I want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, we can't do that. 
Next we have Game Space. Now this feature or application just tries to improve your gaming experience and gives you a lot more cool features. Now once you add all your games to this game space and then open that game, your phone will divert all the resources to improve your gaming experience. It means faster game load speeds, better visuals and more than that it gives you the option for do not disturb mode where you won't be interrupted with annoying notification sounds or visual disturbances like banner notifications. You also have different power profiles to improve the performance or battery life. It also gives you the option to disable auto brightness, which is missing on many phones out there. Next we have Private Save. Now this feature is more like an application or like a vault where you can hide all kinds of files. Just like the app lock, we can have a completely different password from your lock screen and we can unlock it using your fingerprint or your facial data. Personally, I suggest you to use Gallery Vault. Next we have Automatic On Off. Now this is another weird name for Schedule Power On and Power Off. And using these settings, we can automatically turn on and turn off your phone at a specific time. Next we have Kid Space. If your kid is troubling you about your phone, he wants to play some games or maybe sometimes he accidentally purchases stuff, Kid Space can be quite useful for you. Once you configure this Kid Space, your kid will be able to only use specific applications that you choose and he will be able to use your phone only for a specific amount of time. Once again, it's a nice feature, but if your kid already knows your password, it's completely useless. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and make sure you check out my video on tips and tricks section, link will be in the description. Now if you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off, have a nice day.